The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship, both in person and online, this third Sunday after Epiphany. A special welcome to those who are visiting today. Everything you need for worship will, will appear on your screen or is printed in your bulletin. And we're so glad that you're here. One last reminder this morning that Epiphany stars are still available and will be through the end of February. You can pick up your Epiphany star with the word on it in the um, narthex on your way in or out of church any Sunday. Or if you're not planning to worship in person during this season, you can request from the office that one be mailed to you. Being grounded in an Epiphany star word is a spiritual discipline, a spiritual practice that we are engaging in together as a congregation this year. And all are welcome to participate. You can even pick a star up for a friend or family member. Now some big news about our organ. Back in 2020, a capital campaign uh, was uh, set forth to raise funds to restore and renew Augustana's Letourneau organ. And I'm excited to share that the organ renovations are going to begin this week. A hearty round of applause, if you will. <laughs> Rest assured, we're still going to hear the organ during our Sunday morning worship together, though uh, throughout the project it may sound a little bit different here and there week by week as pipes and parts are sent off for repair. Look for a special e-letter article from Betsy and Chu Young about this fabulous instrument that does accompany us in worship each Sunday, and for updates on the project, which will wrap up just before Easter. Thank you to all who gave generously to make this renovation possible. And finally, please mark your calendars. Our annual congregational meeting is going to be February 6th following worship. There will be um, attendance options for both in person and online so that all can participate. And if you are a member of the congregation, please do plan on participating. We'll be uh, electing new council leadership and voting on a proposed budget. Annual congregational meetings um, can get to seem a bit like rote business. I'm aware of this. And yet, this meeting is going to set the course for the entire next year of ministry at Augustana. And Augustana simply cannot and does not and will not exist without you. You are the church. Your insights, your voice, and your vote are all truly valuable and desired. So I will see you on February 6th, amen? Amen. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who spoke creation into being, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to shine like stars. Let us come before God confessing our sin with the assurance of God's mercy and grace. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. And God so desires release for you that God would leave the heavens, put on skin, be named Jesus, and walk around in the dirt like the rest of us. That Jesus would walk into a synagogue and unroll the holy scriptures and find the exact spot that proclaims liberty and release and freedom for the captives. First order of business. The gospel is extremely clear. We were meant to be free. You are meant to be free. And not tomorrow, not after you die, but today. Jesus says this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing of it. Today, your sins are forgiven. Today, you are loved just as you are. Today, you are set free. And yet we know it's not quite so simple as that. Is it? Because there is still hurt in the world, and there is still sin, and there is still evil all around us, and things and people still get broken, and all is not yet well. And so we're right to ask and to lament, where's the freedom then? When do we get to feel it? How do we find it? You might recall that Miss Pat, my adopted grandmom, died in October. You all spent months praying with me for her as her body slowed down and eventually found its rest. We're all captive to death in the end. But in the weeks before she died, she was in peak form. She was telling stories and making jokes, often inappropriate jokes, in that delightful way of an elder who just can't be bothered to care about decorum anymore. She also had trouble breathing there at the end. And that was really hard. One visit, she was telling me about it. She said, I'm not too happy about this downturn. And then she continued, but I look at that cross over there and it helps a whole lot. And so naturally my eyes 
followed her gaze to the wall across from her bed looking for some cross or crucifix or religious symbol of any kind. There was nothing there. It was just the closet door. And then I realized that Miss Pat had seen the pattern of a cross in the molding on the closet door and from that had decided that God was most certainly with her in this most ordinary and difficult of places. And dang it, that's not just the most Miss Pat thing. And she always had a rosary handy, but she didn't worship or cling to crosses or statues. Rather, she saw God everywhere. She saw good everywhere. Her imagination was such that she could conjure whatever was needed in a given moment, be it a memory or a story or a laugh or an image of a cross on a hard day when a little bit of comfort is what was needed. Miss Pat did die, but death did not own her. That woman died free. And just as Jesus rose from the dead, so too will Miss Pat, so too will we all, not even death can hold us. That is the strength of Jesus' promise of freedom. And so, no, the world is not a perfect place. And we are not perfect people. But we are meant to be free, and we are meant to experience that freedom here and now, not just in some heaven light years away, like the hymn says. And it's simple things like imagination that can free us, and gratitude, and stories, and laughter, and memories. Working toward justice can free us. Insisting on freedom for others for all is liberative for all. And when we defiantly sing and dance and celebrate life, when some would say there's nothing here worth celebrating, then we are free. That's the power of the joy of the Lord, our strength, as the passage from Nehemiah says. I mean, loving ourselves and each other and especially those who need love the most, those who have been lied to and told they're unlovable. Surely that sets us free. Binding ourselves to one another in community, interestingly enough, sets us free. All this to say, discipleship, following Jesus, sets us free. And even when we mess that up, Jesus' unconditional love for us sets us free. God's forgiveness sets us free. The Spirit's warm invitation to try again sets us free. Freedom may not always look like we expect, but we should expect it. Freedom is coming even if we can't believe it yet, pushing through our walls and taking them apart piece by piece. Jesus is in the synagogue even now, reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, Beloved, you are set free. Jesus is in the synagogue even now, reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, proclaiming liberty for all us captives. Thanks be to God. Amen.
In unity with Christians around the world, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal to us, you reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your Church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to re reunite us into one body. Ease conflict dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, suffering from hunger, living with pain, or dealing with natural disaster. We ask your special blessing today for the people of Tonga. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Healing and sustaining God, we pray for those experiencing deep need at this time, especially Azad Yunus, neighbor of Greg Schultz and Betsy Fulford. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless the members of Augustana coping with health concerns or other challenges. We name today Edith and Warren Briggs, Alex Brown, Pearl Cox, Herman Davis Jr., Chuck Leith, Ingrid Margrave, Margaret Mushala, Susan Pisa, and Carol Vizzetti. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, hear yeah, our prayer. Yeah. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. We commemorate today the life of Buddhist monk and peace activist Thich Nhat Hanh. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear yeah. our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. 
simply share a physically distant sign of peace with one another. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praises. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, this is Jesus' table, and we all come at his invitation. Jesus makes no exceptions, so neither do we. Come, taste and see that God is good.
Beloved of God, worshiping online this morning, this is the body of Christ given for you. Please commune. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. 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 with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.